Aspen, 1985. The site of the greatest sporting upset the world has ever seen. It was inconceivable. I mean, I still can't figure out how it happened. I, I was drunk the whole time, but who wasn't? Pinnacle in the history of downhill ski. One thing's certain, the 1985 World Ski Games were full throttle. Aspen in 1985 was as beautiful as it was unforgiving. That meant there was no clowning around in these games. Thankfully, I, world-renowned sportscaster Burton Quicksilver, was there to cover it with the Extreme Sports Network. Hi, my name is Burton Quicksilver, and welcome to the Extreme Sports Network. We are proud to present the 1985 World Ski Games. There were many storylines at these games, but none more compelling than the competition between fierce rivals Brody California and Lars O'Shanahan. Lars O'Shanahan, he was a wild card. Lars, the typically brash New Jersey, busted onto the skiing scene in a big way five years prior. 1980 Olympic Games. My 1980 win at Lake Placid? Oh, it's unparalleled. Lars, then just 19 years of age, blew past his competition, setting the downhill speed record of 87 miles per hour. The gold came soon after. He became America's sweetheart overnight. Lars rocketed to superstardom, and America soon realized Lars' big personality had been more than they bargained for. America soon found out he was a total degenerate. I don't know how they didn't know the whole time, what with that greasy mullet and all. The mullet? Exquisite. Is that mullet boy? His hair? It looks like my grandma's weasel. While Lars's haircut may have been divisive, its popularity showed no bounds. It even made an appearance at the 82 Westminster Dog Show earning Scooter second place. In addition to the hair, Lars had another eccentric touch on the slopes. He was the first pro skier to use a caddy. Come on, Fredo, I was Lars' caddy. Maybe carry his poles, and I hated every minute of it. Lars soon struck up a friendship with celebrity bad boys Robert Downey Jr. and Axel Rose. My boys RDJ and Axel, they were always there for me. Whether I was in the slots in Atlantic City or hitting the rails in Aspen, they always had my back. This hard partying degeneracy soon caught up to Lars in a big way. An ABC News Brief brought to you by Budweiser Beer. Now, Ted Koppel. Good evening. This just in. Gold medalist skier Lars O'Shanahan has been arrested in Jersey City today on charges of embezzlement, grand theft auto, and illegal possession of a hand grenade. That arrest shook the skiing world to its core. Now, Lars, even more crooked than that. Horseshoe made by my slow, slow brother, Sven. No comment, I guess. Lars spent six months in the slammer, and upon release, left the ski world altogether in pursuit of enlightenment on the Isle of Sri Lanka. Lars returned to the States two years later, supposedly a changed man, yet his sights set on one goal, the 85 Ski Games gold. The 1985 Ski Games meant the world to Lars. He wasn't going to go down without a fight. The atmosphere was a buzz, drawing celebrities from around the world, including ski legend Franz Gable. I'm here with world-renowned slopestyle specialist and Austrian native Franz Gable. Apparently, Franz is trying out a new invention. People are calling it the Uniski. The people, they don't understand. It's called the snowboard, and it's going to take the world by storm. Snowboard? Yeah, Franz, I don't think so. Franz Gable's Uniski? What a joke. Franz became the laughing stock of the game, scoring dead last in every event. Many contributed his collapse to an inflammatory cover piece in a recent issue of Skiers Quarterly. The Uniski? 
That was worse for the sport of skiing than Brody, California. Lars, tell me, what do you think about the competition this year? Honestly, the competition is absolutely non-existent. And I'm tired of everyone talking about this up and coming pretty boy, Brody, California. Give Dude, me a break. Bro, it's not in the spirit of competition. Come on. If I was in LA. Brody was a fresh face on the tour, but his parents' legacy ensured he wasn't short on name recognition. Ross and Lucy California were skiing royalty. Ross Signal and Lucy dominated the sport in the early 60s, all while keeping a close relationship with Brody, some alleged too close. Well, anyone involved in skiing since probably since the beginning of time knows that Brody California was in love with his mother. If you were on tour, if you were around the game, you would know that his nickname behind the scenes, the other skiers were calling him Oedipus, for Christ's sakes. The dude was a freak. Unfortunately for Brody, that relationship came to an abrupt close. The Californias died in a freak gondola accident, leaving Brody to pick up the pieces. Brody wanted to win, but he wanted more than that. He wanted to honor the memory of his fallen parents. He never let the tragedy bring him down, as he soon became known for his relentless positivity. Like, I'm pretty darn thankful, and you get to chill with the bros, dude. What more do you want? Smooth sailing. While quickly becoming a media darling, Brody's performance left some question marks. Brody could do everything. He was a renaissance man, a jack of all trades. He coached underprivileged kids to a soccer championship, worked the night shift at the ER. There was one thing he couldn't do, ski. He was, in a word, terrible. I've never seen a worse skier before than Brody, California. I mean, honestly, I, I think he was just doing french fries and pizza the whole time. That's, that's kid stuff. Yeah, Brody, how you say in America, is trash. Brody's shortcomings didn't go unnoticed by Lars, especially in light of his seemingly unwarranted popularity. All the fans were there to see Brody, and Lars, I'll be honest, it got to him. We love you, Brody! Thank you, guys. In 1985, I was skiing. The fact there were even fans there to watch Brody, complete travesty. The atmosphere was great. The fans were out, people were enjoying themselves. But once race time came around, the tensions were ratcheted up to 11. I'm just telling you, California, I'm gonna kick your butt. Dude, we're just gonna see what happens. Whoever's the better skier is gonna win. I'm sorry, but this is gonna be a piece of cake. Dude, let's just let it go and, and have a good ski competition. The medal is mine, California. I mean, everyone was itching to see this race. It was, it was classic David and Goliath. California and O'Shanahan at the starting blocks. You're going down, Brody. On your marks, get set, go. The race began neck and neck, but soon, Laws showed his true talents. Now Shanahan takes a commanding lead! He was practicing his jumps all week. No one knew why. It was just a downhill skiing event. Lars was coasting to victory, but much like Icarus, he flew too close to the sun. Now Shanahan coming down to the finish line. It's the jump! Oh, lights out! And Brody, California, takes the gold! Those jumps? Yeah, I thought I could make them. Sometimes the best have off days, that's for sure. Meanwhile, Brody, California had captured his dream. And I just want to start out by thanking the, the skiing community, the sport, the World Federation of Skiing, all the boys on the slopes, my family, my little dog back home, my girlfriend, you know, all of the, everyone. World class guy, Brody, gold medal winner. Thank you. Thanks. Gold medal, golden ticket, golden corral, golden shower. What's it to me? These awards mean nothing. You know, up there in heaven, the Californias, they were looking down at their son Brody that day. Unfortunately, 
The celebration didn't last long. Eyewitness News with John Marler. Good evening, breaking news. Skia Brody, California has died today in a freak gondola accident. I mean, he always said that's the way he wanted to go out. And honestly, put a big bow on the whole narrative structure going on between the two. So we're all happy here 20 years later. What do you think of Brody's death? On record, I'm going to say no comment, but guy was soft, that's for sure. Decades later, Lars still hasn't lived down that fateful day. Uh, after the 1985 World Ski Games, I kind of up and quit skiing. I couldn't stand to see snow again, so I moved to Myrtle Beach. It's an alright gig. Um, I'm a part-time bouncer at a Senor Frogs. Um, but I love partying with the Spring Breakers, so that's what's really important to me. So you still suck now, just in a different way. Yeah, yeah, I still suck. Lars was always kind of a train wreck. It's not shocking that it's come to this point. Old, alone, and pathetic. Lars has most definitely hit rock bottom. Oh no. How's it feel to be second to Brody, California in the record books? You know what? <laughs> Downhill ski. Lars may forever wish to rewrite history, but Brody's place in it is secure. He rode off into the sunset. What else could you ask for? The world will never see anything like that again. I certainly won't. I've been beezin for 15 years now. I just see fuzzy shapes. All in all, Brody lived as he died. Full throttle.